Hey everyone, so welcome back to automation. This week we're going to be getting back into automation. I did take a bit of a break from it last week just because after a while it kind of gets stale just doing it every single video of automation so that's why I was mixing it up. But this time we're going to be making an incredibly boring 90s sedan because you asked for it. Yes, believe it or not, there have been a few comments about people saying that I make cars that are way too ridiculous, so let's try and make something that's a little bit more realistic. And again, by a little bit more realistic, it's not going to be 100% accurate to anything. This is completely my own design, there are no references for this one. So let's go ahead and do it. So the year is 1995. We're going to be attempting to make something that's similar to maybe the Accord or something like that, uh, but we do have uh, this body here which I've decided to use. Let's go into the chassis. So. I did already pick some materials just to make sure things were working right, but we've got steel, monocoque, steel, and we're going to go for a transverse engine in the front. Probably going to be a four-cylinder, I would suspect. Uh, okay, so when it comes to suspension, let's just go... We'll go double wishbone in the front, and then we will go... Oh no, I don't even know. We'll just go double wishbone in the back. I'm not sure what suspension is on some of these older cars. Uh, but we'll leave the quality sliders where they are. Let's do an inline four. Haven't done one of those for a while. Cast iron inline four. Let's make it a 1.8 liter. How about that? So we'll drop down the stroke this time. Uh, go for 1.8 liters. There we go. 1.8 liters. Perfectly aligned there. Uh, let's go overhead cam. Uh, three valves per cylinder just to be obscure. Normally this is not what I would build with, but we'll go with it. Uh, variable valve lift. We could go for this. Let's let's try it. Um, let's go for cast components. We might end up changing that. Horsepower wise, this car isn't going to be crazy. Uh, I'm aiming to just go just over a hundred, so we don't need anything too nuts. And we won't go VVT either. No turbos on this build and uh, injection as well. All right, so it's just regular EFI on there. I think that's going to be fine. And when it comes to headers, we'll just go cast. Uh, we could go short cast. Yeah, no, we'll just go cast. And in an attempt to be realistic, let's go for uh, some sort of baffling. Usually I don't do that. Okay, so immediately we're knocking, and we're only making 37 horsepower. Uh, not great. Well, the good news is that these engines are pretty easy to tune. Uh, just because I don't have a turbo to mess with, it just means that we're going to be messing a lot more with uh, compression and cam profile, and we also have the VVL profile to deal with too. Uh, but first things first, let's make it not knock anymore, just raise up the fuel mixture a little bit. Now fuel economy would be something that would be considered with a car like this, uh, but for me I'm more concerned about the goals of getting to the power figures that I want, uh, rather than the economy that I want. As long as we're using the fuel, I'm fine with it. Okay, so our compression is probably a little too low then, uh, to be able to get the power that we need. And I guess need, I mean, this thing is not really needing much power, it's more of an economy vehicle. Uh, 80 horsepower, we're getting closer to where I want to be. Let's see, so our headers are the most restrictive piece. Um, let's try short cast instead. There we go. That'll help us get to the goal quite a bit easier. And dropping down the exhaust, we are gaining power up to a point. 108, I think I want to go for 120. Uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe 120. If we up the VVL profile, we might be able to get there pretty easily. And boom, 120. Okay, that should do it. If we raise up the RPM just a little bit more, a little bit of stress on the pistons. We, we want to be reliable. Let's do this. Okay, that seems perfect. We could get more power, but for the build, 120 is all we need. That's a nice straight curve. The torque curve is a little bumpy, but I think that's going to work fine for a four-cylinder. Okay, when it comes to design, uh, we have the sedan, we have the hatchback. It's not going to be a hatchback. We could go coupe, we could go ute. <laughs> uh, we could, uh, let's just go sedan. Um, this body in particular is pretty plain. Uh, it doesn't need to be anything fancy for this. I'm just going to, I shrunk in the wheel wells a little bit there. It almost gives me uh, some Audi vibes, actually, the earlier uh, generation Audis. But yeah, we'll just... Uh, make our own design this time. All right, I've just tweaked the body just a little bit there, and we've come up with something that I'm okay with. It's pretty round on the front, uh, but the back looks fine. And on to paint. Now, I do have a very particular idea for this car. Uh, we will go beige. Uh, hopefully that turns out okay. 
All right, I think I've got it. It's kind of a gold, kind of a beige. It's not accurate to anything that actually exists, but I kind of like it. Uh, trim is definitely going to be, well, I mean, we could make these beige too, couldn't we? Um, but the, the trim is just plastic and that works out well for us. What we could do as well is we could swap the bumpers for plastic, uh, but this is fine. Um, I think the all beige is going to work. Now when it comes to wheels, they are currently steel colored and that works as well. Let's go on to fixtures. Now I know that there are some hubcaps in here somewhere. I'm going to try to find those because I've never used them before. And uh, I figure this is the car to put them on. Uh, so the idea of this, by the way, I should probably say, it, like I like making these basic cars because then I like going back and modifying them and making like a sport version of it. So that's sort of the idea. We're going to make the basic one now, and then at some point we will make a custom sport version. Oh, okay, there we go. Those are the hubcaps. Oh, man. They are not particularly good, but they work for this car, I think. Uh, we're not going for style points on this one. It's uh, the basic of the basic. Okay, let's put some grill on it of some kind. Uh, again, not working off of any references here. I'm, I'm doing this on my own. So it's probably not going to look particularly good, but I will try to make something that's decent. However, it is going to be very, very simple as this car is intended to be like that. This is the hardest part of any design, just coming up with an idea for the front. Uh, that's why I like to work with those reference pictures. Uh, just because it, it gives me a starting point, but when it comes to this kind of thing, I'm like, I'm faking it here. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out exactly what I want to do. Uh, but I know one thing for sure with this car is like, anything that can be plastic should be plastic. So here's what I'm talking about when it comes to a performance version. We just take the regular car and just slap a couple of these on there, even mirror it. The biggest twin turbos you can possibly fit. I had an idea with this one. Uh, because, like, we usually the cars I make are not basic trim versions, uh, but what we can do for this one, just because it is, is we can have, uh, fake fog lights. Like, you know how cars will have fog lights, but if you don't have the fog light option, then you don't have the fog lights themselves? Like, what we can do is we can just black out these entire pieces, just use them, just make them all plastic, and it's like, well, <laughs> that's where your fog lights would have been if you paid more. <laughs> There we go, definitely not unhappy with that. I like the way it's looking. Uh, we're gonna need an upper grill of some kind or just maybe a small vent. How about one of these but flipped and then uh, shrunk like this. That is interesting. All right, the headlights that I've found here are pretty much perfect. They are basic and they will work perfectly for this build. I uh, just have to get them right in those corners, and it's like, yes, that is exactly what I was looking for. It even has plastic trim around the outside, like, that is exactly right. Now we just need a some kind of vent here. I, I had tried that before, but just couldn't come up with one that I liked, but uh, I find that just a lot of them are way too um, deep, which is kind of weird, but it's true, they're just too deep. <laughs> this one sticks out too much. Uh, just because I know beam kind of blocks these things off, I figure I might just block them off myself. Uh, however, it doesn't quite look right. Like, it, when I go to the, the, um, oops, it's this one. Uh, but when I go to the translucent pieces with here, it just looks so weird. Oh, goodness. Well, it's different, I'll give it that, but I think I'm going to stick with it. Now, this brand is actually going to be a different one for me. It's not one that I've done before. Uh, so we need a symbol for them, and I think it's going to just be a K, just like that. Just a K on the hood, that's all it needs. <laughs> I'll reveal the brand in a bit. Okay, let's get on to the sides. Right, so I have put on the most basic mirrors possible, and I'm going to attempt to put on the most basic door handles possible as well. Oh boy, not those. Uh, maybe these will probably work. Just this on there, and then we'll put the non-locking ones on the back. That should work. Maybe they're a little big, though. Yeah, just like that. That works out pretty much perfectly. Nothing too crazy on this car, but I'm I'm really liking how simple it is. It doesn't need to be complicated when, uh, when it's meant to be simple. Especially the front. It's not bad at all, actually. And on to the back. Now, actually, you know what? Let's put a little bit more detail into this one. Let's put wipers on it. I just often forget to do it, so uh, we'll just put the 
normal kind on there. Wow, that is huge. Okay, good. They're they're highly scalable, so we're we're fine. It really likes to put one just in the center, so I'm going to do it. One central wiper on this car. <laughs> yeah, why not? That's kind of fun, actually. These rear lights are like nearly perfect. They're almost exactly the old Civic lights, uh, which is kind of what we're going for here. Although I think this car is more of an Accord than a Civic, but yeah. If we change the colors and we change up the trim on those, that should be perfect. Just gotta darken everything. I really don't like the uh, super bright versions of these. There we go. Uh, maybe if that's the slightly, yeah, just a little bit lighter works. Uh, <laughs> I'm unsure about this decision, but I'm kind of having fun with things at this point, which is the whole point of this. It's just nice and low on there. Now we need some sort of light up at the back as well. But this is going to be one of those rare cars that I make that actually has full turn signals and reverse lights as well. So I kind of like this light here for the reverse lights, uh, just because it's pretty scalable. You can just take it and uh, make it into whatever color you need it to be, which in this case is red. Uh, very red. I think these should go higher, for one. Uh, I also need to write some <laughs> some letters down here. Uh, we're going to need a door handle on the back. I almost always forget that. And, uh, you know what? Let's just say they reuse the the same handle. Actually, we'll make it a... Yeah, just like that. Same handle on the back that's on the sides. Uh, we'll put that a little bit lower. Uh, again, we're going to need a plate. I do have these California plates. Uh, unfortunately, some of them stick out like crazy. But then others of them just are perfect. I don't really understand. I guess it just gives a lot of options. There we go, just like that. That works out nicely. Uh, we don't really need any vents on the back or anything, but I do want to put some sort of definition on there. Um, in the past, I have done this thing with the back vents that uh, I'm probably just going to end up doing again. However, I know that there are um, actual fixtures for that now, so maybe we can try those out. I mean, if I can find them, that is. Oh, I totally forgot. They are actually license plates by themselves. Just like that, but <laughs> way too big for whatever reason. They're just massive. Yeah, it, it doesn't look good, so we'll get rid of that. Uh, we'll just make our own. And just like that, we have some rear definition. I'm not sure about it, um, <laughs> but I'm going to probably stick with it as long as things stay okay here. What I want to do, though... Um, I don't, I'm putting so much more detail into the back and like more care into the back than the front, but I just have this idea. I just kind of have to do it. All right, I think that's going to work. Definitely not perfect, but reasonable. Nothing too crazy with this car. It's got a pretty good front, an interesting back, but we're not totally done with the back yet. Uh, we still need to put some letters on it. Now, this kind of leaves some space for the letters, which is perfect because I want to write the manufacturer here and the model here and then back here I don't know there's just gonna be nothing I guess nothing really needs to be up there we could just raise this whole assembly up let me let me try that oh maybe not oh hold on a minute I kinda of like where this is going now that actually does look a little bit better Ah, you know what that works it fills up a bit of the empty space so uh, we'll leave that there just like that. Okay, there's been a slight revitalization of the back end. And I think... Oh, uh, let's maybe put that flat. Oh, dang it. Thank goodness for an undo button. But uh, let's just make this a flat piece. And uh, we'll lock those so I don't end up doing that again. Looks a little awkward from the side, but that's just because this is indented. Uh, but I kind of like this, so we're going to leave it. All right, so because this is supposed to be a Japanese-style uh, basic sedan from the 90s, the brand name is going to be Kinzoku Dangan, and that's what Google Translate says uh, means metal and bullet in Japanese, so I figured that would be kind of interesting. It's not particularly meaningful or anything like that. I mean, most car manufacturer names are not meaningful, but... I think it's kind of funny. Plus, we can use the name Metal, which is this, uh, for a lot of other different things, which is going to be fun. So let's go put that on the back. Unfortunately, we don't have any coloring options for letters still. Uh, I was going to 
try something different, but I think I'm just gonna make them the same as I usually do. Lining up letters can be pretty tedious, but as some people had suggested in the comments from before, uh, what you can do is you can take a straight piece, whoops, uh, you can take a straight piece or maybe uh, a box or something and just turn it on its side, widen that thing up, and then uh, check your letters to make sure that they're properly aligned. And it seems like everything is fine here. Alright, so we have Kinzoku on the back, and one more set of letters over here. I decided to underline them just because I thought it was cool, and I'm going to probably do the same thing over here. Alright, there we go. I think that looks pretty good. Uh, we are missing exhaust though, before I forget. And also, we kind of need... Oh yeah, we have colored exhaust now. Uh, we can we can color the exhaust. Yeah, I don't think that that bend is going to quite work though. Okay, there we go. I just realized the engine isn't in the car yet, which is unusual. I almost always put it in first, but... Uh, actually, before we do exhaust, we should probably put the engine in just to make sure the exhaust is actually going to work. Um, but we do need a fuel cap. There we go, just like that. We will be tweaking suspension and stuff in a bit, but for now we need to go to drivetrain. Front wheel drive is the way to go here. <laughs> Automatic, four speed auto, uh, nothing too crazy once again. It can go up to 225, which is pretty fast. Uh, well, hopefully it can actually make it up that fast. We'll try and make the gearing decent on this one, as I've kind of made some mistakes in the past. Um, let's go medium compound, I guess. 195s seem pretty reasonable, 15s. We could even go 14s, but 15s seem fine, and uh, everything else there looks good too. Let's go solid discs on the front, um, just actually one piston solid discs, and we'll go drums on the back, um, these being a little bit bigger, and uh, I guess these being bigger as well. I don't expect that this car will weigh very much. Now the engine is in there. Uh, so we do have exhaust coming out, uh, it, it kind, of, kind of just poking out there right now. It is currently lodged in the bumper actually. So let's put some exhaust pipes on it and see what that does. Okay, perfect. These exhaust pipes do work for this. Uh, what I want to do though is just make them, I guess we could just make them a steel color. Uh, they don't need to be crazy. And I found one that's just a little bit more clean, so we're going to use that instead. Um, but uh, just like that. It's pretty simple, it doesn't need to be too crazy. This car has barely any power, so just a tiny exhaust out the back is all it really needs. There we go. That should work perfectly. All right, we were back on aerodynamics, so there's nothing, no cooling flaps, a little bit of brake airflow, it doesn't need anything crazy. Uh, okay, let's, let's try and be realistic with the interior. We'll just go standard, and we'll just say it's a... Uh, standard cassette as well that'll help raise up the weight of it i guess and here as well uh standard 90s safety it doesn't need to be anything crazy uh standard springs we'll go gas monotube and um passive i assume oh okay that's a lot of green there <laughs> this is a first it's actually almost within the lines within the first attempt presets let's just try a normal preset that actually raises it up just a little bit what well, might not be perfect so as i raise the width of the tires the uh drivability went up pretty significantly which is good i don't think we're violating this graph at all we seem to be in the right area um but this should be up in here somewhere it's actually a pony budget for some reason it's not rear wheel drive and yet it's 97.6 percent how does that make sense okay i'm fine with those things uh we'll move on to the brakes Front brakes are not strong enough, rear brakes are not strong enough either. Uh, what do you know? Uh, let's try increasing the size of the front brakes. Uh, this is, now it's a fun car. <laughs> this is the complete opposite of what I was going for. Um, but yeah, fun car now. Uh, we'll raise that up and then we'll just raise up the brake pad type as well. I really need those fronts to be good. Uh, this is more expensive, but... Yeah, it, I mean, it'll be fine. There we go. We'll just have it right where it needs to be. And there are no warnings on this car at all, which is nuts. Um, aerodynamics, uh, I think we're fine on that. Seats and such, we were fine. I think we might be good to go. This car might be ready to take out... Uh, I don't know what it's going to be doing on the track, but drive to the track to go spectate. That would be pretty much it. Um, 
Only $17,000, not bad. All right, 120, I'm um, basically 121 horsepower. 7,000 RPM is pretty good. 1.8 liter i4, single overhead cam. Let's see what this thing will do. <laughs> Probably not much, but I kind of like it. Probably one of my better front end designs from no inspiration at all. All right. Here we go. So here we have an example of a house that likes cars. They drive cars for fun, or and they drive cars for pleasure. And then here we have an example of a house that drives cars as an appliance. Uh, but yes, this is the latest creation. It did not turn out too badly overall. Let me just turn it off so there's no more background noise. Uh, I really like the front end of it. I think that turned out pretty much perfect. The hubcaps are <laughs> they're exactly what you would suspect. And uh, the back end isn't too bad either. One thing that's pretty funny about it, um, we'll just back out of the driveway. You can see that it's smoking a little bit. The fuel mixture is up really high, so it runs a bit rich. And that means uh, that there is some smoke coming out of the back. But let's take it around Garfield, Hi Garfield Heights here. And that is what this map is. Um, but yeah, <laughs> let's go for a drive just around the city, which is what you would kind of expect this car to uh, be doing. And there's the gas station. Gotta go stop up here. Uh, textureless gas station. But hey, it's better than nothing. Overall, this car does not drive poorly. Surprisingly so, actually. Uh, being at 7,000 RPM is actually decently high uh, in terms of speed. I can't be shifting my own gears because it's an auto, but uh, yeah, you can see it picks up some speed. Like, you can get up to highway speed pretty easily. Much more than that, not so much. It kind of reminds me of my dad's Honda Civic. Like, it's a good economy car. I mean, it gets you to where you want to go, but you're not going to be going particularly fast. It's more of an appliance than, uh, than something that you do for fun, which is okay. Like, that's something I understand. I drive pretty far to go to work every day and uh, it cost me a lot of money to drive my car because it takes premium fuel and it's it's more of a luxury car like those kind of things um people who don't really care about cars won't put up with like it makes sense to have vehicles like these yeah, even i want one like i'd save so much money and doing donuts in the school parking lot again what you'd probably see one of these doing at least later in life uh yeah not too bad so i don't have a track to test these on uh, yet for the season like I said, we're probably going to be doing one big video uh, towards the end of things when I've decided exactly what cars I want to do. Um, so it's more just like drive around and have some fun with it, which is <laughs> basically what this is. Uh, but this being a Tuesday video, I want to keep it a little bit shorter. So that's going to be it for this video. Um, this car drives well, <laughs> and I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, so just a slight clue for what's coming up next. Probably going to be doing a Wreckfest video uh, later on this week. If the update actually comes out, I uh, thought it would be out today, but obviously it did not come out. This was Monday. Um, I guess it comes out on Tuesday. But yeah, I just want to thank those who have supported the channel. Specifically Will, Canadian Steel, and Slow Fried Chicken 69 Thank you for your support. Also, I just wanted to say, for those of you who are wondering, I'll post it down in the comments, but uh, the showcase actually finished yesterday at 12 o'clock. That would be Monday at 12. So I'll be streaming uh, this coming Sunday, probably, hopefully, as, as long as things go well. So look forward to that. We're going to be racing 50 cars on the Light Runner track, and then the 10 Wild Card cars will probably be on a different track, but it'll be, again, a Light Runner track. So it's going to be fun. Uh, hopefully you will be there to come out and support. And yeah, and then the next showcase will be in a couple weeks after that. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the video. I'll see you again on Friday.